Hey, it's me, and thanks to all of your comments, feedback, and encouragement, I decided to turn this into a weekly series. The pilot episode received a lot more attention than I expected, which is great. Yesterday I had an on-site interview with News 7. I had another interview about the series today, and I'm meeting Thursday with someone about the possibility of covering an intersection in their hood, which has a lot of traffic deaths, so I guess I'm going to be making a lot of jokes about that. In order to maintain my sanity, I'll be doing these mini-episodes every other week, so the even-numbered episodes. Or I may just do them when I'm busy. Or lazy. Or tired and depressed and don't want to get out of bed. Or maybe this is the last one. Basically what I'm saying is let's all just manage our expectations, okay? In a mini-sode, I'm going to be overanalyzing a specific unfortunate quirk about an otherwise perfectly okay intersection. Mini-episodes also won't include the reanalysis from the previous episode, which means you still have time to get your comments in about 16th and Troy. There have been a lot of really great ideas, and I'm really excited about sharing them and putting them into one final design. Welcome to my neighborhood. It's a former streetcar suburb just outside of downtown Denver. One of the unfortunate things about it though is some of the streets are way too wide. I chose this intersection A because I walk through it every day, and two because it provides an interesting case study on a mismatch between signage and human behavior. Emerson is a very narrow street, as a residential street should be, and 25th is unnecessarily wide and has a center line and bike lanes. 25th feels like the dominant street, but it's also the one with the stop sign. So what happens is drivers on 25th often either blow through the stop sign or come to a screeching halt at the last second. Frequently, people driving along Emerson will stop at what feels like should be a stop sign and cause confusion for people walking and people stopped on 25th. One solution would be to switch up the stop signs, obviously putting a big red flashy light over the new ones on Emerson. Because of the bike lanes, I'm fine with there not being a stop sign between Downing and Washington. Another solution would be to install tiny red flags on the stop sign so that drivers might notice the stop sign. Oh wait, that would be... Silly. Oh wait again, that's exactly what happened, bitches. Now, I don't know who actually put these up, but they showed up in the last week or so. Maybe they were put up by someone in the neighborhood who just got tired of almost getting run over. Or maybe they were put up by the city, but that'd be weird, because that would mean they think that tiny red flags would do a better job than, I don't know, installing a stop bar in a crosswalk in the intersection? It's okay though, we got those flags. 